Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about abstract factory design pattern. Abstract factory pattern is a very good pattern to discuss after we discussed the factory method design pattern in my previous video. So let's talk about what is abstract factory pattern. Abstract factory pattern is also a creational design pattern just like the factory method. And the main intent of this pattern is to allow an abstraction over other factory classes. So if you think about it, it is kind of another layer of abstraction on top of factory method. So if we go back to the solution that I worked on last week, in this solution, we essentially had iLawnmower catalog, which is the main interface, and we had diesel lawnmower, electric lawnmower, and manual lawnmower catalog, which implements the iLawnmower catalog, and have their individual implementation. And then we had a factory method, which is responsible for creating the object based on the type of the lawnmower passed. And the problem domain that I discussed in my last video was about a e-commerce website for buying lawnmowers where the user is going to select a type and based on the type will provide an appropriate lawnmower catalog. That was the high level idea. Now, as I mentioned just right now is the abstract factory design pattern is yet another abstraction on top of the factory itself. Meaning this factory is responsible for creating the underlying object. Now consider if we have to abstract the factory itself and what would be the scenario for that? So, personally speaking, I have not used the abstract factory design pattern as much as I have used the factory method. I personally do not see a lot of use case for this pattern, but there are definitely cases where it is useful. If you have used it in the past or if you see some use cases where you think it is really useful, please leave a comment in the video. Now, for our case or for our scenario where we have an e-commerce website for lawnmower and we are showing the catalog and so far we considered only the scenario of type of the lawnmower. Now let's consider if we want to support the manufacturer. So in the UI of this particular application, apart from the type, the user can select which manufacturer is manufacturing the lawnmower. In that case, it would make sense to create an abstraction on top of this factory itself. So let's consider this. Let's say lawnmower catalog is for a general company and we are creating a specific lawnmower implementation for all the type diesel, electric and manual for another company. And for the time being, let's say the company is XYZ. So if we create another class, public class XYZ manual let me just copy the name from here for saving some time so XYZ manual lawnmower catalog implements I lawnmower catalog and here we can just again copy paste this line and say XYZ Okay, so this is for XYZ. I know as a best practice, we should have every class in its own file, but just for the interest of time, I'm just going to keep the classes in the same file. Similarly, we can create one for diesel and we can say and we can just copy paste this line here And then finally, we'll create one more class for electric. And we can say public class electric. Then let's just copy paste this line also. XYZ. Okay, now all the three classes are ready. But here, when we created a lawnmower catalog in the lawnmower catalog factory, we just created the diesel, electric, and manual, and this is for the general. Now, we similarly, we create another class, and we are going to name it as public class XYZ lawnmower factory, lawnmower catalog factory, 
and here again we can have the same switch case statement but here we'll just have xyz instead of the standard default one so now we have two factory classes one is for general lawnmower catalog itself and the other one is for xyz lawnmower catalog now we have two factory each factory is responsible for creating the underlying object based on the type the type of the lawnmower and similarly we have another factory for creating again lawnmower catalog based on the underlying types but this one the xyz lawnmower catalog factory is responsible for xyz manufacturer lawnmower product so that's what we have done and this consider these two as two different factory implementation now abstract factory is an implementation on top of it for providing the factory itself so for abstract factory if we create an interface called i lawn lawnmower catalog abstract factory it will have a single method inside of it which will return i lawnmower catalog factory itself and it will be create factory and for the create factory we'll take the manufacturer name as the parameter manufacturer now we can go and create a class based on this and we can name it as lawnmower catalog abstract factory which implements i lawnmower catalog abstract factory and if we implement the interface here we can have we can say manufacturer switch and we can say xyz goes to new xyz lawnmower catalog factory that's the class and the default value is new lawnmower catalog factory so that's about it again the name and all has to be case insensitive but just for this example i'm keeping it like this so now based on the manufacturer we have different factory and based on the factory we will have different classes so as you can see it is three layers of abstraction that's what the abstract factory is all about and now if we go back to startup and if you remember in my last video i had this whole implementation through lambda function for factory method for the time being i'm going to comment it because we'll get back to it so now the implementation of the controller also will change. So the controller is going to take two parameter. String manufacturer and string type. And here for the time being, let's get rid of this implementation. And we are going to expect I lawnmower catalog abstract factory in this case, instead of the factory method as last time and if you are finding a little bit difficulty follow through this code i'll strongly suggest to go through my previous example not because i am reusing the code it is also because they are very related to each other now this has to be public that's why it is showing this as quickly and now this should go away yeah and here what we are going to do now is we are going to say lawnmower abstract factory dot create factory pass the manufacturer and then we can do dot create catalog which is going to give the catalog and then get lawn more as you can see let me remove this so that it is it is easier to read so first one object is the abstract factory the create factory is creating the lawn for more factory itself and then create catalog of the lawn more factory is creating individual catalog and then get lawn more is returning the lawn mores associated to the catalog so as you can see it's three layer of abstraction and now that we have this setup let's go to startup and here all we have to do is we have to do service dot add singleton and here we need i lawnmower catalog abstract factory 
which is lawnmower catalog abstract factory and this is the only thing we need to register in the dependency injection because the lawnmower abstract factory will create the individual factory and the individual factory will create the associated object so that's all is needed in di and now if we run this application and here if we try it out for manufacturer we give xyz and type we give electric we should see xyz electric printing out and that's what we see xyz i am electric lawnmower and if we get rid of the xyz and execute we'll see i am electric lawnmower because it is falling back into default so as you can see it is yet another abstraction level on top of the factory itself and now just like last time what we can do we can change the implementation in the controller a little bit and instead of taking the i abstract factory we can completely get rid of that and we can have a function here whose input parameter is going to be a string and the output is going to be i lawnmower catalog factory and then let's change the implementation here and then here instead of calling a create catalog we're just going to execute this function and that will give us a i lawnmower catalog factory from which we can create one and then get lawnmower so here in the startup we can get rid of this code and we can create an implementation but this time this is going to be catalog factory and here we can have xyz goes to xyz lawnmower catalog factory and otherwise it's going to be a lawnmower catalog factory that's about it okay so this should be it and now we're just using a function a lambda function to return the i catalog factory instead of the higher level abstraction class but this is doing the exact same thing as the abstract factory class did but it is just through a lambda function so now if i run this and we go and we execute here if i don't pass anything and try it out it's going to give just the normal manual lawnmower and if i pass xyz it's going to be xyz manual lawnmower so as you can see we can do the same thing without the abstract factory class itself just through the lambda function and if we want to be a little bit more fancy here we can go one level down and this lambda can expect two string and we can create the entire implementation of factory through a switch case statement instead of creating two classes of factory with multiple switch case we can just do everything here so we can create a string and it's going to be manufacturer and type and then we can say switch on manufacturer and then here we can have switch on type and here we can have the exact same code as the catalog factory for xyz so we can just copy paste this line put it here and this is going to be i lawnmower catalog instead of catalog factory and then similarly we can have type switch and we can copy the exact same implementation here and just return xyz and keep the default implementation here so as you can see we could replace the entire implementation of the factory and the abstract factory classes into these methods and now if i go back to the controller change here string this and just go and change the implementation here and then here I can just call passing the manufacturer and type and then just call get loan mores and this will act as an entire implementation of abstract factory taking two parameters through this implementation of the dependency injection.
I personally, if I have to implement an abstract factory, I would do it this way because as I mentioned time and again, I like to keep the entire object creation and object lifecycle inside of the dependency injection container instead of other classes. But I showed you two ways of doing it, whichever suits you, you can use that. And now if we run this, we should see the exact same result as before. And we go here, try it out and just try it out without any parameter it is just say manual and if we do xyz and here we say diesel it will say xyz i'm diesel lawnmower so as you can see two different ways of implementation for the same thing and as i mentioned i personally have not used the abstract factory a lot but I'm sure there are a lot of scenarios where it might come in handy like this scenario. If you have any experience, please leave a comment below. I'd like to hear how you used it before or how you intend to use it. That is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.